Thanks for tuning in to Healthy Planet One, where we discuss healthy living from experts in each of their fields. This is your host, Patricia Starr. And your co-host, Kimberly Knox. Today's guest on Healthy Planet One is Dr. Ernesto Fernandez, and we'll be talking about catching hidden brain problems early. Welcome today, Ernesto. It's wonderful to have you. Uh, You are, as we understand, a doctor of oriental medicine an acupuncture physician, and a licensed mental health counselor. I know your career started in 1984 in the healing arts and that you specialize in um, in working with chronic pain, mood disorders from multiple injuries and concussions. Uh, you are also the author of The Healer's Journey and numerous articles. So we're so welcome, so glad to have you on the on the show today, uh, I know you've been working both in clinical nutrition, energy medicine, memory impairment and dementia, and you are certified in the Brensen Protocol, reversing mind cognitive impairment. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, thank you, Patricia. Good morning to you and, and to Kimberly. Uh, thank you for having me on your show. It's really great. And I know one of the things that has taken your interest into extensive areas is the the integration of the mind-body and specializing in um, various issues with the mind. So I know we're going to be talking about what does it mean catching hidden brain problems early? Give us a little hint on that one. Um, uh, Great question. Well, as you know, in, in natural medicine, often you know, where we have chronic symptoms isn't necessarily where the real problem is. And this is especially true with the nervous system. Uh, you know, here are some common chronic symptoms and conditions that people have, but, but rarely ever do they associate it with specific um, brain and neurological issues. For example, sleep apnea, chronic UTIs, interstitial cystitis, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, post-traumatic stress disorder, frequent eye fatigue, migraines, depression, anxiety, brain fog, even bloating and gas often have a meaningful component that's related, that's, that's indicative of what's going on with the brain or the brain is contributing to, to those symptoms. So there's a connection with the, the, the gut as well as the brain, right? The gut, the urinary system, your sleep cycles, uh, your, auto, um, uh, your vision, your sensory nerves, you know, it, it's all interconnected and your mood as well. So give us some examples of hidden brain and neurological p- problems. Okay. So I gave you some, some common symptoms that we don't usually associate with neurological problems. So, so here are some categories of, of, of diagnoses, if you will, um, that... For example, there's something called SCI, which is subjective cognitive impairment, which is you're noticing that you're not as sharp. You're having perhaps having to think a few seconds longer to remember something or find a word, but others don't notice it. So mm-hmm. already you know, something slowing down in the processing speed on your recall in your brain, and that's an early warning sign. And a lot of people kind of shrug it off, but really, the sooner you address that, the better, because that way you can keep it from progressing into mild cognitive impairment, which means that you notice it and then others notice it as well. When then the next step up steps into either the, the you know, stages of dementia or Alzheimer's. So that's one that, that everybody you know, should be more vigilant about. And what happens with us is when these things start to happen, you know, people sometimes get scared and they go into denial and they go, oh, well, well, hopefully it'll just go away. You uh-huh. know? So another category is often, you know, un- undiagnosed or poorly, poorly evaluated concussions where people, you know, hit their heads, but since, you know, pretty hard, but since they don't um, go unconscious mm-hmm. or don't particularly have headaches or anything like that, you know, they assume there's nothing going on with their brain. But you know, research has shown that there's people, you know, there's all sorts of uh, hits to the head that we get that were quote asymptomatic, yet when they do brain scans, it shows wow, you know, there is 
you know, impact. And for example, if you've ever been in a car accident, even if you've never hit your head, you know, you know, you're, you know, inside your the way the brain is designed is like it's three pounds of jello that's inside your cranium. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that shakes inside. And and you know, people it may take months or years before a person has any symptoms from that. But these are things that are seldom really early screened and properly evaluated. Another category is what I refer to as chemical concussions, which these are exposure to you know, toxic chemicals, uh, things that you breathe in, or even in your food supply, people, you know, uh, some people are especially more sensitive to things like MSG. And, you know, they may get a little brain foggy, you know, or feel tired, and it kind of goes away. But, but that's, you know, they, that was just a chemical assault in their brain. And for some people, they're more resilient and they never have long-term issues with that, with an occasional exposure. But some people are not that resilient, and they, you know, they keep eating this stuff or exposed to, to these things that they breathe in. And over time, you know, the nervous system just really starts to downregulate. Um, there's another condition that's um, seldom talked about, what's called n- nervous system exhaustion. And, the, and you can you can Google this stuff on, pl- on PubMed, and they usually will show up under the titles of something called neuroinflammation or central sensitivity syndrome or mm-hmm. or CSS. Mm-hmm. And this is basically where your your nervous system is burnt out, and there's a whole range of symptoms that people get from this that are. You know, RSD, you know, reflex sympathetic dist- uh, dystrophy, restless leg syndrome, the fibromyalgias, you know, all these things that's basically, you know, it's a burnt out nervous system um, that's involved. So these are things that are seldom uh, evaluated for people. They're, you know, they're treated for these other symptoms per se, but they don't circle back to see what's the brain involvement. And what happens is, a condition that a person could have had adequate treatment and within you know a few months um, you know turn the situation around now it could be years that they're struggling with it you know chasing the symptoms and not really getting to one of the the, the root component factors wow uh, you know the question that comes up for me uh, dr fernandez is how did you happen to go into this direction Number one and number two, especially when you hit upon this nervous exhaustion, I would think that's something that people are dealing with in a big way uh, at this time with what's going on in our in our world. It's a lot of people have it and and don't realize and people don't know how to screen for this. But you know how and why I got into this and in, into the field. Uh, I appreciate you asking. Uh, when I, I I wrestled in high school. And by the time I reached my senior year, began my senior year, I had chronic pain for about a year in the entire left side of my body. I had serious insomnia. Um, I was depressed. Actually, my, my mood would go all over the place, actually. <laughs> I would get angry really easily. Um, it was, uh, I was a mess. So I had not only chronic pain, but I, I, by that time I've had four concussions. Um, and back in the day, you know, they really didn't know how to handle that very well. You didn't give yourself adequate rest. You just kind of kept competing. Um, and some of these, two of these concussions were like illegal moves. Uh, two of them were, mis- you know, uh, ignorance on my part. The two times I didn't wear headgear, I, <laughs> I had a headbutt on the right temp- uh, temporal lobe, which gave me a cauliflower ear. And about a year later, I had I didn't wear my headgear again in practice and I had a headbutt in my left temporal lobe which broke the cartilage in my left ear but at least I had enough sense to get that lanced. Um, so I, I personally experienced you know significant new mood changes and I was just trying to you know, put Humpty, Humpty Dumpty back together again so uh, mm-hmm. as I you know pursue the whole medical route to find out you know you know how to address all these different symptoms uh, all I, I was fortunate to have met my first mentor and, you know, 
and he started, you know, open the door and sort of, you know, getting my life back. So mm-hmm. that's, and then, you know, the, you know, the, the last bastion of change was my nervous system. And, and back in 2005, 2006, around there, I really started having more symptoms mm-hmm. and it really scared me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had, you know, I had a really successful career as a professional speaker, traveling internationally, training practitioners and instructors, da, da, da. but that stressful lifestyle really ex- ex- exposed a lot of the weaknesses in my nervous system. And, and no one at the time could really figure out what was going on with me. So I had to like do a deeper dive to figure this out. And I was fortunate to have some good colleagues to, 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 you know, support me uh, in that process. And that's why this is an area where I, I check a lot with people because conservative measures are that about, you know, a third of the people who have chronic conditions that don't resolve have, you know, undiagnosed brain neurological component. But clinically I have found that it's like, you know, over 70%. Um, if someone's been struggling with something for several years and they haven't gotten any better, you know, you know, there's, there's an untapped neurological component, um, involved. Okay. I think Kimberly, go ahead. You have a question. Yeah. One of the things I love that you focus on, um, Dr. Ernesto is that you're looking for the root cause. I know that you're going to, um, share with us if there's any way to reverse, you know, this, because as a functional integrative um, practitioner, we do bring up those things. Uh, I love that you brought up MSG in my work with food um, as a coach. um, There's literally 20 different ways MSG or more can be hidden, which I have to educate on my clients. And then um, through my mother having issues with, uh, mental disturbance and stuff and my work looking at magnesium um i'm certain that you do but maybe you could delve into uh is there hope to get to the root cause of this to reverse in a safe way these kind of problems a great question oh yes um the, you know these things are definitely can be significantly helped but i think before i answer more details about that um, let's address, you know, you know how, how do you identify these things? Yeah. You know, because you can't treat something without knowing what you got. Um, yeah. You know, so right now there's over 50 known factors that contribute, you know, to brain and neurological problems. And I say no, because there's probably many more. Mm-hmm. Um, and these can be identified through a variety of different lab tests. Some are urine tests, some are blood tests. There's different types of brain imaging, there's functional neurology testing, which I do a lot of, and these are you know, very specific you know, ways of, of testing and challenging parts of your brain and nervous system through movement or, or stress. And they, really, they help isolate specific parts and how well they are working. Um, for example, two thirds of our brain is wired for movement and balance. And that two thirds of your brain protects the one third of your brain that's used for problem solving, reasoning, memory, and emotional regulation. So a lot of times, you know, a decade or two before you have any cognitive awareness that there's a problem, you're you're having some balance-related issue, some Mm. movement-related issue that unless you really put your body under that particular kind of stress, you will never know um, that you're struggling with that. Mm. And so these are some of the things that I do with people to really challenge is like, you know, um, you know, what's really going on under the hood. And, you know, there's two tests that I can, you know, re- you know, share with the audience and you guys can do there from, from the studio. Um, one is a general test for central nervous system toxicity. Okay. You know, we talked about the MSG and this is, um, if you test positive for this, you know, you have some chemical toxins in your brain, mold biotoxins, biofilms from parasites, perhaps, bacterial infections, like you know, any of the Lyme series, like Babesia, Bartonella, and Borrelia. Um, there could be some of the viral things like Epstein-Barr. So this is, how the, this is how you do the test. 
Okay, you you stand up. You know you gotta make sure that you're wearing flat shoes or you do this without shoes. You stand straight. Your feet are together.